My name is Kyle Hodges. I'm a tech and a trainer for McNeil, and this is Getting Started Writer for Windows. And if you had not been part of one of these sessions before, these are a little different than most software demos that that uh, you may have seen. You don't need your cameras on. You don't need your mics on. You can definitely have the chat open, though, because I do welcome comments, questions, anything like that along the way. The way these work is either the day before or the day of, in this case, the day of, I do a scrubby little sketch of something that kind of interests me that I think has some interesting modeling value, and we talk about how to do that. And I was in a thrift store recently, I live in Seattle, and saw this really cool old TV, and I liked the shapes on it, and it struck me that not only are the shapes on this interesting, but there's actually a really kind of a complicated modeling problem that this thing brings up, because it's very kind of iMac-y kind of, although I guess the iMac kind of ripped off this because this is from the 60s. Um, but it, it's got this kind of shape to it that's that's pretty difficult to make. And so I did a little doodle on it on my phone with my finger, and then I came back and cleaned it up a little bit so that it's not absolutely awful. But I liked kind of the stuff that's going on here. And so I think I'm going to try and pull this off. And if we go to basically back to the beginning here right the way that i the way that i start all of my models is essentially we use the picture command and in this case i'm going to find the image i'm going to drag it in the scene now because this is a perspective sketch it's not orthographic it's not top right top right front whatever we're going to have to do some interpretation to try and figure out how to get our views out of this. The most important thing about this sketch to try and figure out is, you know, kind of what the overall shape of it and and all that kind of stuff is. And so what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to take this sketch and I'm just going to kind of stick it up here as a reference. I'm not even going to try and work off of it. I'm just going to use it as a reference. And shapes like this are pretty interesting in a number of ways. And so let's let's start, and I'm going to talk about several different ways to kind of pull something like this off. And the first thing that I'm going to do is get a vaguely proportional rectangle. We can argue over whether the proportions are correct or not, but the point is I'm going to take this and explode it into its individual curves now, and then I'm going to rebuild this vaguely four points, degree three, and we're going to let that go ahead and run. Now, when I turn this on, it's, let's see, I've got two curves. I forgot to delete that. Sorry. I mentioned that I don't rehearse these, right? <laughs> nah. The point of not rehearsing it actually is not because I'm lazy. It's because I want to put myself in the same position that you are in when somebody walks into your office and says, build this, and you got to figure it out on the fly. So that's why I do that. And I'm going to delete the inputs. That's what I want to do. And then that leaves us with the rebuilt curves with four points per segment. Now, the nice thing about having four points per segment is I can just do a little scale here with gumball and get really nice, even curves. And then I can come up here and I can fill it these edges that's a little small. Let's go with a little bit bigger one. <clears throat> Maybe even a little bit bigger. This guy's got kind of generous corners on it. There we go. That feels a little better. And we're going to end up with a curve that looks like that, right? So that's great, and that feels good. And we can create a surface off of this by dragging another curve out, and then um, in the front view, I'm gonna identify where the center of this guy is, and I'm gonna drop a point, and then I'm gonna take this point, and I'm gonna stick it kind of somewhere out here. And then we're gonna use loft, and we're gonna just connect these curves, but the last one we're going to connect is point. And a lot of people don't know that you can use loft like this. And what it does is it creates, you know, it connects these two and then it br brings everything down to this singularity and brings it down to a point. And if we don't simplify it, 
we end up with actually one open surface. Even though we started with a poly curve, we end up with a surface. Now, there's a couple of things that we can look at here. And if I throw, sometimes this is a little easier to see if I throw a material on this and we go to rendered view. And we can take a look at this and kind of see what's going on. Now, the one thing that you'll notice right off the bat is there's a very pronounced X on the back of this thing, which is very kind of not what we're looking for. We kind of want very smooth, very um, even stuff, right? Now, we can play with this a little bit. So let's go back to shaded mode so we can see what's going on. And if we turn on the points for this surface, and I keep using my hotkeys, I try not to do that. If we turn the points on here using the points on command, you can see that the points of the object are structured in a way that gives us kind of some options for dealing with this, right? And the tool that I'm gonna use to play with this is called Move UVN, and there's a ton of people who have never even seen this tool, and so I love to try and show it as much as I can. What it allows you to do is to pick a point, and we're gonna run the cell V command, which allows us to pick all of the points in that V direction, and then we're gonna come down here to the smoothing. We're gonna just smooth these guys out a little bit, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna redistribute those points in the V direction, and you can see that that kind of softens everything a little bit. And we're gonna do that to this row too. Cell V, smooth it a little bit, and you can see that that shape is now starting to soften a little bit. Maybe do this row too, just a little bit. And you can look and kind of see like how the shape of this thing has changed. And you say, okay, well, we're heading in the right direction, right? This is, this is starting to feel a little bit better. However, it's still, that X is still there. You can still see it. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, we used a fillet in here and fillets just fit a circle into there and circles are not necessarily entirely tangent. So the internal tangency of, these, of this curve could probably be a little bit better. The, the, the circular fillets that are in here are a degree two instead of a degree three with four points. It's a degree two with three points. And so there's the the tangency is not necessarily high order in this corner. And so you end up with this kind of mechanical, you know, fillet in this area and it, and it translates all the way down the model. So let's say that that's okay, right? We can, we can do this kind of stuff and, you know, get basically what our shape that we're looking for is, but it's not, it's not ideal. So let's look at another way to do this. Similar line, similar thinking and, but what we're going to do is is use what I like to refer to as rule of three. And if you haven't you if you if you don't understand what rule of three is or you haven't seen that video, this is something that I've been harping on for a couple of years. And basically, what it is is it takes three points to make a corner. So if we have a leading point and we say one, two, three, and then an exit point, the the three points that are in this corner make up the corner. We don't need ten points. We don't need, you know, 500 points. And if we move it farther apart, the corner gets softer. And if we move them close together, the corner gets softer or, or uh, farther apart, softer, closer together, sharper. And we can look at rule of three and we can say one, two, three. And then we can say two, three, two, three, two, three, right? And if we analyze this curve, one, two, three, makes up this corner, this point, this point, and this point make up that corner, this point, this point, this point, make up that corner, on and on, right? And the problem is because we're stealing a point from each transition, we can't adjust them independently. So if I move this one, it adjusts everything. So in order to get this shape so that we can adjust the transitions independently, we have to go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and so on, right? So now I've got these points here that are isolated, right? From these points over here, 
those are isolated. So I can control this transition with these three points. I can control this transition with three, these three points. And if I move this farther away, it gets softer. If I move them closer together, they get sharper. Okay. So the basic understanding here is that you need three points in order to make a transition. Now, there's a straight line between these two. So if I want to control the shape of this area right here, I only have two endpoints. Now I could steal this one here, but then I'm influencing that. And so what I want to do actually is I want to add one more point here. And now I can control this transition and I can control this transition as well. And this is really important to understand because what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at our original curve. And if we look at this original curve, we can do some looking here and say, look what we've got. We've got one, two, three, that's our corner. And then we've got two points in the middle, which are actually one more than we actually need because we only need one point in the center here in order to be able to control this shape. And we only need one here, we only need one here. So we've got actually one extra point than we need. And if we count this, if we count this with cell point, you can see that it's got 20 points, right? We've got four more than we need, so that means that we really only need 16 points. So let's start with a circle. Let's make it deformable. Let's make it 16 points. And let's drop it right next to this one so that we can compare. And I'm going to hold down shift just to constrain it. Now, when I turn on the points, you can see this is all nicely distributed. And I'm going to turn the points on so that we can see them. Now, if I grab these three and I scale them flat, and I'm going to snap it down here. And if your gumball doesn't do this, in the gumball settings, there's a snappy dragging and a smooth dragging. I always run mine snappy dragging so that I can have it respect O snaps. Scale to zero to flatten it. Snap. And then same thing over here. Scale to zero. And then snap. Scale to zero. And then snap. And what we end up with is a nice rounded shape that follows rule of three, right? One, two, three makes up that corner. One, two, three allows us to control the shape in between the corners. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. One, one, two, three, right? So that satisfies rule three. All right. So let's adjust this a little bit so that it does kind of more what we want it to do. So I'm going to grab these three points here, and I'm going to just scale them out a little bit. And you'll notice what happens is I get that little arc that I'm looking for. I'm going to take this and pull this like that. And now I can adjust the overall shape of the curve and say, well, it needs to be a little bit more rectangular. But it's doing kind of what we want it to do. In fact, I might even, I might even pull those just a tiny bit, just so that it doesn't go flat on me. And now we've got a nice shape there. So let's go back and, and do the same thing that we did before with the other, with the other surface. I'm going to take this, I'm going to grab my gumball, start dragging, I'm going to tap alt to make a copy. See that little plus sign shows up next to my cursor, drop that there. And then we're going to put a point in the center of this thing, we're going to just identify the, the quad and then identify this quad. And then snap it in the middle. And we'll pull this out like that. Now, we're going to use the same thing we did before, which is this loft. Sorry, I keep grabbing that for my pop-up. It lives over here. And we're going to do it to a point and it's going to run. And you can see right off the bat, the structure of this surface is different than the structure of this surface. Even though it's kind of similarly laid out, the, the, you can see that that X pattern is kind of not as prominent, right? So let's turn the points on and see what we're dealing with. Now, 
two second chat on continuity. So if I'm going to have two curves that are tangent to each other, and we're just going to talk about tangency at the moment, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to do this. And if I turn the points on, right, I've got, I've got this curve and I've got this curve. Tangency, this is G0. If you hear anybody refer to continuity as, as, as uh, G, G0, G1, G2, G0 refers to this is the first point. And these points touching makes this G0, okay? So this is, this is positional continuity or G0. G1 refers to the next point out in the chain, right, in each direction. So if I want these all to be tangent, all I have to do is scale them so that they're in a straight line. And that's tangent, that's tangent, this is tangent, that's tangent. Tangency is defined by G0 and G1 being in a straight line on both sides of any kind of connection. Okay. Now, in a surface, right? And so that's, that's tangency of curves. If we look at surfaces, it's the exact same thing. If I turn on the points for the surfaces, you can see that these, and those are extrusions, sorry. These extrusions, no. Extrusions are a lightweight object. If you run across surfaces that look weird, that don't have points or anything, um, that's why you've got extrusions turned on. All right, now if you turn the points on, you can see that there is now not only points going in this direction, these are lined up, so that's G0, right? But I can also take these three points and I can put gumball right in the center here. And then snap that so that it's aligned. And I can adjust the tangency of the surface down the length of that control polygon. And I can adjust the tangency to be different than it was on the other end because surfaces are in three dimension, curves are only two dimension, right? So I can do that still tangent, that still tangent. I can rotate these like that and that's still tangent, and this whole surface is tangent down its face. So if we understand that, right, the G0, G1 lineup on a surface, and we start looking at this guy, and I turn the points on, if we look at this from the top view, what do we see here? So I've got a very similar situation to what we just saw, right? I've got this. See that? Turn those points on. Boop, boop, boop. See that? One, two, three. And you're seeing the points being distributed around the surface. And what did we just learn? If I take this and I scale these flat, what happens? This becomes tangent. So if I take all of this and I scale those flat, what's going to happen? The bottom of that back, back boy is going to get to be tangent. And because we did it in three direction, three dimensions, it's tangent in all directions. So we fixed one of the problems that we have with this thing. We've still got a little bit of an X if I look at this in rendered view. We've still got a little bit of an X, but not nearly as bad. And the surface is a little bit more amenable to DXing it. So let's go back to move UVN and let's do cell V in this direction, and I'm going to de-square it a little bit by smoothing this in the V direction. You can see that all those curves are starting to be a little bit more circular. And notice how that X is starting to fade away. And then we're going to do the same thing with this guy. See how that's starting to go away more? Everybody's like, I'm going to get a job at Apple. <laughs> <laughs> well, you could do that. And we're going to soften this guy out a little bit. And now you can see that when we get rid of the points, that 
pronounced X is almost gone. And we can start playing now with the shape of this and say, well, how deep is it? How flat is it? You know, is it in, is it a, a Philco, but it's an LCD or is it, are we staying in the sixties? I'm going to stay in the sixties cause that's how old I am. And so this is probably a pretty good candidate compared to this. And we can argue that, that this is a better result than that. Right. Cause we can see that those things are gone. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to, tuck it over here because I'm going to say that's probably candidate number one. All right. And I'm going to just delete these curves for now because I think all I need is the surface. All right. So now how else could we make this thing? Well, we could, we could go to sub D and we could just make a cube, right? And if we go, let's do this in shaded view. And if I delete the face of this thing, I get a pretty nice shape, right? It's not not very sharp. It's not a little too soft, doesn't quite do what we need it to do. And so we can add some information to this. We can add some edges in here and sharpen this up a little bit, but it's a little a little hard to control, right? And it also gives us kind of a weird vibe in the back maybe we add another edge out here maybe we turn these points on and maybe we scale these points in a little bit to see if we can do something a little bit less crazy but it's not quite doing what we want we might try stitching and bringing those all to a singularity and then we would be in the same situation that we were before, which is we need to grab these guys and these guys and scale them flat. But see those weird wrinkles? It's not quite doing what I want it to do. And we might be able to play with that. We might be able to get it. You know, we might be able to slide this edge a bit. But it kind of feels, it kind of feels like a lot of work, right? It's kind of not doing what I want it to do. So let's look at a different option. And if we look at a sub D sphere and we set it up to be a quad ball, and let's go to the middle or go to the front and different styles up here. We're going to use quad, bring this out. And we've got a little bit different topology. And if I take the face of this thing off, you can see that we've got a little better distribution for kind of what we're looking for. All right? Maybe we scale this a little flatter. Maybe we scale this a little flatter. And then we scale the whole thing. Not bad, right? We can grab these four faces and switch that to points and we can shift drag scale and play with the back of that. That's, that's not bad. We can decide if we change the proportions of this a little bit. That may be candidate number two to decide whether or not we like that. Cause if we throw a, material on this. Very, very smooth. No Xing at all. Very nice curvature, kind of continuous type of thing. But it, it lacks a little bit of the structure in the corners. And we might be able to capture some of that by adding some more detail or subdividing or something like that. But I kind of, when I, when I look at sub D stuff, especially I do a lot of sub D stuff, when I look at sub D stuff, I kind of am like, how, how much do I have to fight it? Or does it just kind of happen? You know, like sub D kind of lends itself to some shapes really, really well. And other shapes, it's like, it's a pit fight and you're chasing edges and topology and, you know, all, and it's just like, oh God, you, you know, <laughs> make it stop. And, and so I kind of look at sub D and, and can I get there really easily? And is it making my life easier or is it, is it 
something that I, you know, now I really got to start fighting it. And in this case, I think, I think probably I like the single surface with the easily identifiable points and all that kind of stuff. So I think we're going to use this guy and get rid of all the others. But I just wanted to show you kind of the different paths in order to get there. So let's, let's agree and say that that's fine. Or don't agree and you can do your own webinar. So let's go ahead and just cap this guy off. And I'm just going to turn it into a solid object. Okay. And making the front of this thing used to be projecting curves and blah, 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 blah and all the stuff that you had to do. In Rhino, in Rhino 8, we just use the inset command. And we're going to use through point and we're going to just drag our wall thickness in there like that. And then we're going to use push pull and we're just going to push this in a little bit done and then we can shift drag because this is degree one geometry we can even scale that a little bit and give it a little bit of a little bit of taper maybe that's too deep let's pull it out a little bit and then for the other stuff i'm going to inset again and that's the inset command and i'm not going to split it i'm going to change this to no and then I'm going to change this to through point. And the reason that I'm changing it to no is because I want it to be inset, but I don't want it to actually split the face. I want it to just give me a curve because I'm going to mess with the curve a little bit and I'm going to reposition it. And then I'm going to come out here a little bit like that. And... Then I'm going to look at this and then I'm going to realize that this curve is trash and I'm going to get rid of it. <laughs> and I'm going to remake the curve because I don't like the way that that was looking. That had way too many points for what I want to do. So let's do this again. We're going to do a deformable 16 worked great last time. So let's just go ahead and do that. And then let's go through the process that we did before, which is to just flatten this guy out i probably should have kept the original curves that's that's on me i know better than to get rid of curves when i'm building something especially client models because they always are like can you just make one last change at five on a friday <laughs> no go away Has anybody, has anybody watched that Rule of Three video? You won't hurt my feelings if you say no. It's okay. If you haven't, it's worth doing. It's on our YouTube page, Rhinoceros 3D at YouTube. And it's just called Rule of Three. And it talks about, it talks about this, this three point, this concept of, of building curves minimally with just three points in order to get what you want. Um, and it also is, is in relation to sub D. That, that's kind of where the original idea struck me was that in sub D, the thing that I see most often when people send me models and say, my model doesn't work, it's because they've got way, 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 way too many faces on their model. And it's just a matter of simply simplifying it a little bit and using less faces. And I'm going to just manually go in and tighten these corners. Actually, that one looks pretty good. See where this opening would be. I do a lot of eyeball modeling. I spent most of my career in the toy industry, so there's a lot of ish in what I do. People who work for brawn and things like that <laughs> makes them crazy every time i do this you're like but you're not using numbers nope <laughs> no i'm not all right so let's call that good we're going to use push pull push pull is going to identify that that surface is actually on there and we're just going to push this in and then i'm going to shift drag i'm going to shift scale and i'm going to just do that a little bit. Maybe that's a little too deep. Let's pull this in a little bit. 
And let's call that good. Let's look at our picture and see how we did. I think we left ourselves enough room to do dials and things in there. And we've got enough room that we can throw a couple of little blends on blends in there and stuff like that. I'm not going to worry about that at the time being. So let's look and let's build our little dials. And I think I'm going to go ahead and do those with push pull because that's easy and I like easy. So let's just snap a circle here and let's pull that out a little bit. And if you haven't messed with push pull in version eight, it is fun stuff, especially for hard surface modeling, which is kind of what we're doing here. So let's inset through point. I'm going to just drag kind of here. I'm going to push pull in. I'm going to inset again through point. I'm going to kind of come out here, push pull again. And then I'm going to draw a center rectangle. And now let's do that in the front view. And I'm going to overblow that a little bit. I haven't tried this before. Let's see if this works. Let's see if it'll identify that if it over overshoots the service. Oh, sweet. It does. So that's actually a nice little hack. You don't have to... Because otherwise you'd have to like draw a curve, draw a curve and like and trim it and all that kind of stuff. Who has time for that? Let's just draw a curve, overblow it, and then just pull that out. Lovely. I like that a lot. And then let's just add a few little details in here. Kind of like this. And let's do the same thing here. And it remembers the last setting you used. So if you're insetting a couple of times, um, if you pick this and I drag in, if I don't left click, if I just right click to accept it, it'll drop it at the same depth as the other one. And let's do this one too. Just add a little something here. And let's add, let's add a little detail around the outside of this thing. I'm just going to do a center square and I'm just going to do a little teeny detail here. Shift control drag. And then I'm going to scale this in a little bit to give it a little shape. And then notice how little actual tools I'm using here. It's a lot of gumball. Gumball has like completely transformed how I do things mostly. Especially this kind of stuff. And now let's go to the front view. Transform array polar. Find the center of this thing. And let's do, I don't know, 30. See what it looks like. Oh, many more. We're going to need many more. Let's do 45. What are the name? 60? No, 65. 80? That feels better. Let's do 80. That gives us that little detail. And we're going to drag select. Boolean everything. Booleans work a lot better in 8. If you've had problems with Booleans in 6 and 7 and 5 and 4 and 3 and 2, like I have. <laughs> <laughs> Booleans work a lot better in 8. Mesh Booleans work in 8 too, which is something that I could never say before. All right. How are we doing? Everybody still with me? All right. Let's just copy this guy down. And slide it kind of over in here. And we're going to rotate it for a little drama. Nobody likes to see it all squared like that. And then there's two other little, two other little details in here. And one of them, anybody who's not old enough to actually have had to get up and change the channel on the TV, um, 
there was a there's a volume knob and then there's actually like a fine tuning knob so you'd go to like channel two but because you were using a a manual antenna you had to like wiggle the antennas around to try and get a better picture and then there was like this fine tuning dial for you know to try and get the picture to be clear and yeah, it was a lot like a lot like a science experiment to try and watch cartoons. <laughs> I remember being a kid and just being like, for the love of God, just give me Speed Racer before I punch this TV in the face. And yeah, so that's all you need to know about me. Um, let's draw again on the surface here. And I'm going to just use the edge of this as a snap. And I'm going to do this from the center. And the reason I just use the edge of this, because it makes it easy to know that I'm placing this right on the surface itself. And then once I get it there, I can drag that there. And then I'm going to make a copy with an alt tap and bring that over like that. And then because those lie on the surface now, I don't even have to project them, right? They just have to be, and this this is, we're talking about planar surfaces now. This is easy to do with planar surfaces. With stuff that's not planar yet, you do actually have to project it on there. But push-pull, I can grab this and I can just pull it in. And then again, right-click to re-invoke push-pull, click that area, drag it in. I'm not touching any mouse buttons here, and I'm dragging it past kind of where it, it's going. If I pull it out, you can see it. If I push it in, it's red. I want it to push in, so I'm going to just right-click, and it's going to automatically set the depth so that these two faces are the same. Now, I'm going to cheat, and I'm actually going to steal this thing, and I'm going to make it narrower, and I'm going to go to the top view, and I'm going to hack this in half. And then I'm going to mirror this. And that's going to make that dial. And then we're going to rotate this 90. Don't need any of that. And I'm going to snap it to the center of that. And then just drop it straight down. Push it straight back. Looks like it missed my center. A little too fat. And then I can decide, like, how much do I want this thing to be sticky outy like that? And if I want it to be in less but take up more, I need to make this bigger, right? So I can make this, I can make this bigger like that. A little narrower. like I overshot it a little bit. And, you know, if we were doing this for a client, we would take the time to go through and get all of this stuff perfectly lined up and perfectly scaled and perfectly centered and perfectly detailed and all that kind of stuff. People are always like, but how do you get that into tooling? I'm like, in an hour? Calm down, man. <laughs> do this in an hour? Settle down. All right, let's do, let's do, there was a little detail between these two things. I don't know whether it was a logo or what it was, but I'm going to just snap that in there and then pull this in like that and then push pull. And we'll make that stick out a little bit. And then I'm going to shift control click. And then I'm going to shift drag on the scale handle and I'm going to scale that in a little bit. The reason this works is all of this stuff on push pull, this is degree one geometry in this direction. So you can do all sorts of lovely party tricks. I can shift control click and I can just drag this. And because it's degree one, that the, the surfaces on the side update. And so I can scale twist. I can do all sorts of stuff. If these were degree three, they rebuild sometimes and it looks a little wonk sometimes. And so there's some stuff you have to deal with. But as long as it's all degree one, it's easy, easy, easy. All right, let's look at the base on this thing. And it looks like we've got some kind of like aeroserinin little base thing going on. And let's go ahead and just draw that out. Again, rule of three, one, two, three, one, two, three. 
And we're going to call that good. I harp on this all the time because I, I work, my day job is tech support for McNeil. And I see people make curves, right? And they make a curve like this and they go, done. And I'm like, no, 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 not done. No, stop it. And the reason if we look at the curve curvature on these things, you can you can see that like <laughs> if you're gonna try and make a surface out of this stuff, you know, yeah, you don't want that. Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, done. Those are your those are your transitions. If you get in the habit of doing that, you're gonna be amazed at how much better your surfacing starts to come out. And there's a there's a YouTube channel called 36 Verts that's done by a good friend of McNeil and myself, Sky Greenwald, and he has a playlist in there called Primary Surfacing. It's probably one of the best learning video series I've seen. It's a 12-part series. I'm just going to do a revolve here. And it talks extensively about not making stuff too complicated. I'm just going to cap this off so that it's solid. And then we can play with the balance on this thing. Is it kind of that way or this way? I think kind of that feels about right. Curious where the, ah, not bad. So one cool thing about, about Gumball, when you click it, it goes to the bounding box center of the object. And I was trying to like center this visually where the weight of this thing goes. And it looks like, I was pretty close. I might go forward just a hair. That's not bad. Maybe a little forward, maybe just a hair forward. And so the actual bounding box weight of this thing is almost dead centered over that. Now we can argue from a visual point of view, whether like visually it needs to be forward back, all that kind of stuff. But I think we'll leave that for the, we'll leave that for the comment section. Um, let's clean this up a little bit. How are we doing? Oh, 10 o'clock, crushing. Let's clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to use, instead of fillet edges, I'm going to right click and use blend edges. And the reason I like blend edges over fillet edges is it uses continuity instead of just forcing a round ball fillet in there. Round ball fillets to me are, are kind of gross. I don't, I don't like them. I feel like they just don't look very pretty. And so I like to... I like to use the blend myself. Let's do, let's do this. And it actually is a sharp transition between the two, which ooh, actually, ooh, let's do this. Let's explode this off. Let's add shift control, click on the edge and let's just add a little edge to this and then let's I don't need the back I just like that edge right there got to join them actually needs an edge there we go and then what that's going to do is that's going to give us a little reveal right in there. And I like that. I don't like the gap, but let's fix that. And I'm going to just shift control, click this edge, and I'm just going to drag this back. Join that and cap. And then that all goes together. Now, we could take some time and go and boolean that all up and all that kind of stuff, but I'm not going to really sweat that too much. But I think what I do want is I do like the idea of having a little detail around these guys that's set in a little bit. So let's add that. And I'm going to just copy that and snap it to the center. Snap it to the center. Come on now. There we go. And then... Grab both of these curves and I'm going to use Gumball 
and I'm going to snap it to this edge right here. And that edge is aligned with the face, which means I can push pull this in. Same thing here. And then I can tuck these guys in just a hair more. Kind of like having them be in there like that. All right, let's throw a little a few more fillets on this and then I think we're into the final stretch here. Let's make this smaller. Do the same one here. Let's do one here. I'm going to set all, let's do a little bigger on that one. That got a little close, but not awful. And then the other thing about tube TVs, the screens aren't dead flat. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the surface and let's rebuild it. It's a degree one, two directions. So let's just change this to four and four and three and three, degree three. So what that's going to, what that's going to do is that's going to give us a, that's going to give us a surface that is very nicely parameterized. And what we can do is grab these four points in the middle. Don't ever get into the habit of, like, especially folks who are new to Rhino, don't ever get in the habit of just taking what Rhino gives you. Just go ahead and, and grab, you know, pull, pull the points around. Make sure that you're, make sure that you're happy with the stuff that you're getting. There we go. That looks better. And we didn't mess with the edges, so we could join that back in if we wanted to. But I'm going to leave it separate just so we can put a material on it. And then the last thing that we need to do is just, it's got like some speaker grills and stuff on the side. So let's do a quickie. Let's do like a circle. And then let's do another circle. Transform ray polar. Use the center of that. Let's do like 30. And then let's copy paste. Transformer A. I could probably have thought about this and planned this out a little bit better, but let's just kind of roll with it and see what happens. There's probably some clever person out there who can do something with Grasshopper and say, oh, the pattern is this, that, and the other thing. That person is not me. We have those people here. It's just not me. Let's do, I don't know, 13. And then we'll do one more set in the center. Anytime I do any patterning and there's a grasshopper person in the audience, they're just, just absolutely cringing because they're like, it's just, it's just a simple 47 step definition to get that better. <laughs> Like, yes, you do you. All right, let's call that good. And then I'm going to take this thing and I'm going to just position it over here. And we're going to scale it down a little bit and maybe something like that. And then I'm going to just take this over here. I'm going to isolate these two objects. And I should, let me look at it in wireframe and make sure that it's not going to hit anything. Sweet. 
And I'm going to take this entire thing, not that, and I'm going to use this little cutter on Gumball. And I'm just going to go, Meow. and it's going to cut all the way through that thing. And because this is a solid object, right? Remember, we capped that off. It's just going to go straight through. If we were going to, you know, do this for real, we would shell this out and all that kind of stuff. But basically what I need is I need this to, to look appropriate in the rendering. And so we're going to call that, we're going to call that good. And I think we're going to go with a little bit more 60s color. Let's do something groovy like orange. Like that. And let's do a new plastic. And we're going to do that. It's going to be black. And we're going to throw a little... little be like a speckle texture on it. And that's going to be this part. And let's see how our speckle looks. That's probably not awful. And it looks like these guys need to get joined in. And we need a metal... But not super shiny, because it wasn't great metal. It was cheap metal. Too shiny. And too bright. Let's dull it down a little. And then we need a TV screen of some sort. So let's do a new one. And we're going to do this as an emission. Actually, let's do it as a physically based. And then we'll mess with the emission channel. And let's map. Let's map an image. I don't know what I got hanging around my desktop. Ooh, should we do here, we'll do this arty picture. Yeah, no. No one needs to see my face. We'll do the Rhino logo. <laughs> I was going to put my face on it, but nobody needs to see that. <laughs> and let's throw this on here. And let's replicate the Rhino logo. 90. And let's crank the emission down just a hair. And let's do the base color and let's do the roughness way down so that it actually has a little shine to it. And I think the last thing we need to do is just throw a cord in here, right? So let's let's design a little cord. Do a little curve boolean and we'll draw a chord from this. And we'll just have that go out of view. Shift drag to scale. Let's do a sweep one. And Ooh, 
Ooh, something's gone awry. <laughs> I smashed the curve flat. Derp. Oh, because I grabbed the wrong one. All right, so let's copy this. There we go. Paste that. There we go. Let's take this and drop it down like that. And we'll do a sweep one. And if we did this with history, let's let's turn history on. We can mess with the curve after we do it. And then that way, we can grab the curves and we can modify them. Then we can turn on the points for the curve and we can add just a little, little interest to that because curve chords are usually never dead flat. All right, let's get rid of this image. Hide our curves. Compose our scene. Let's get our ground plane on. And I think we're going to throw different plastic on this. And one rendering trick I always like to use is I like to change the camera from 50 to 35. It gives a little bit of drama that the 50 just doesn't quite have. And let's run our quick ray trace on this and see what we got. This is just default. This is no, like, nothing special. You might want to change the texture of this because I think there's, like, a logo or something on there. The other thing that we might want to do is throw a little bit of edge softening on these guys if the model's big enough, but... I think for an hour and 10 minutes, well, an hour and five minutes, because I was five minutes late because my stupid graphics were in. <laughs> but I think that gets us where we need to go. I think, actually, now that I'm looking at this, I would prefer to have this model, this thing not speckled. And so I'm going to just do a sub-object assignment on that. And that's going to just change the texture on that a little bit. And I might make that a little less clear just to make a different material definition and we might want to play with you know it, maybe there's some detailing in here where it's got numbers and dials and logos and all that kind of stuff that's the fun stuff but i won't i won't drag you through the mud on, on doing that stuff but that that pretty much gets us where we need to go and i was hoping that cord would hide a little bit better but we'll fuzz that out in photoshop later <laughs> Uh, Photoshop and procreate for the modeler you ain't. All right, any questions? I think that gets us about out the door. YouTube channel 36 verts. Let me let me get you there. That is cuz that is worth the price of admission right there. If you hated the webinar, the very least I can do is give you this 36 verts. YouTube.com at 36 words. This this is the series that you want to watch right here, Primary Surfacing. This is probably one of the best how to start getting good at Rhino tutorials I've ever seen. 
And Sky is a really, really, really good modeler. And he's completely self-taught, which doesn't make me feel bad about myself at all. At least that I'll admit. Um, this is our channel, Rhinoceros 3D. And this is where all this stuff is going to go. Any of, the, any of the videos that we do here end up here. So this is all the getting started stuff for Windows. It'll be in this playlist right here. When we do Mac stuff, it's going to end up here. Thank you for hanging out with me for the rest of this. It's always fun when we have, a, have an audience. I will let you get on your way. My name's Kyle Houchins. This is Getting Started Rhino for Windows. Go make great stuff. Thanks. Bye.